So we're pretty much done this entire course. Um, the next thing we need to do to f almost finish it off is when our power pellet is like about three seconds or so, we're going to want to start having our ghosts blink. And I believe we set up that animation. Frightened. No, we didn't. Okay, so we're going to create a new animation, frightened blinking. And just make sure it's in our animations. Ghost. Frightened blinking. Okay. And then go to sprites. What we're going to do, you can notice that our blinking matches our frightened one. So we're not going to be using frightened one. So we're going to drag in blinking and then we're going to drag fright frightened two onto six. And then um, we are going to drag blinking onto 12. And if we play that, you'll notice that the ghosts are blinking. So then we can go to our animator. And it's going to have pretty much the same values as frightened. Frightened was moving is true and frightened is true. Well, now. Um, this is going to be set if we're going to create a new bool called frightened blinking. So if moving is true and frightened blinking is true. And this one's going to be if moving is true, frightened is true, and frightened blinking blinking equals false um, okay and this is a frightened yeah cool and then if frightened is true as well so then make sure you set all the typical stuff that we set in here just turn all these off this just makes it so there's no lag when you change the animation um, so go to your enemy controller and in update Um, under the game is running. We only want to do this if the game is running. Um, where do we have game manager dot? There it is. Here's the return. Okay. So we're going to say if game manager dot current, um, or power palette time timer minus game manager dot current power pellet timer is less than or equal to uh, let's just say three um, then we are going to set frightened blinking to be true and in here where you set is frightened we want to also make sure if we're not frightened that we set frightened blinking to false as well. Okay, and now our ghost should start blinking once the timer gets close to zero. All right, moment of truth. And they're blinking. Great. So we can eat them. All right, so this is interesting. I just found another bug. Um, Basically, they were blinking, and then I ate another power pellet, and they continued to be blinking. So, and here we also need to set else animator dot frightened blinking is false. So, if we reset our current power pellet time, we don't want to be blinking. So, that should completely solve that bug. So, I don't believe you guys will see it in the editing, so I'll just recreate what it would have been. So we grab a power pellet and they start blinking and we grab another one and it sets them back. So before it wasn't. Okay, so that is great. I believe we have almost everything working now. What happens if we eat a ghost and the rest of them are in their power pellet state and then we grab another. Okay, so they're still responding. That's good. I want to see what happens now if this ghost eats us while the rest of them are. Okay, so um, I noticed that it didn't turn off our respawning sound on player eaten. So let's go down to player eaten. Hmm. 
we would actually want to do this in stop game, I guess. So respawning audio dot stop. Okay, now to finish this off a little bit, we're going to add some different speeds. I believe right now we only have one. Where is our speed? That would be in our movement controller, right? Um, speed. We have set speed, so that's good. Okay, so if we go to our enemy controller, do we call set speed anywhere? We do. So if side node, we're setting our speed to be one, else we're setting our speed to be two or one. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to say if is frightened, then set our speed to one. Else if ghost node state equals ghost node state enum dot responding, we can set our speed to be like seven. Else under normal conditions, set our speed to be like three. Let's see what happens here. So you should notice them hopefully moving quicker. They are. This is probably a bit too quick, let's be real. Um, what about the respawning speed? I like the frightened speed. The frightened speed's good. Uh, the respawning speed's really good. Okay. So we'll set their normal movement to be maybe like two. And then reload our game. All right, let's check out their movement this time. Hopefully it's a bit better. Okay, so I like this speed. And then we eat them. They turn slow. They go back very quickly. So that's exactly what we want. And you can adjust the speed to be basically whatever you want the speed to be. Um, also, you're going to notice that um, our score multiplier is working. Oh, okay. So now it feels like we're actually playing a real game of Pac-Man. Um, so the ghosts are in scatter mode. I'm actually struggling to think of anything that we need to currently do. Um, oh yeah, our moving. Our movement is still going when we're not paused. We'll fix that after. Oh, I got eaten. Um, so I think that might be it. Um, oh, actually, it would be cool to display our lives. So let's go to game and go to our canvas, game over text. We're going to copy our score text and paste it and just change this to be lives text. And we'll move it over to here. And we will set our lives to be like three off the start. So in our game manager, we can create another function called set lives, int lives. Um, or I guess new lives and then set our lives to be equal to new lives and then we are we are going to have a lives text dot text equals lives plus lives and that should be good we might be we might have to do a dot two string um, we need to make sure to declare that text so public text lives text and then let's go to wherever we edit our lives. So right here, we're setting lives equal to three. Instead, we're just going to do set lives three. And then wherever we remove our lives, so lives minus minus, we're just going to do um, set lives. And we're just going to send in um, lives minus one. And that should be good. So another thing that we need to do now is get our Pac-Man to stop 
moving when the game's paused. So if our game is not running, let's just set moving to be false. And ideally, that should just work right away. So we also have to make sure that we add our lives text to our lives text in our game manager so that we don't get that null error. All right, let's eat the pellet, eat the ghost. Oh, okay, so we actually don't want to set moving to false in our player controller. We want to set our speed to be zero. Otherwise, our speed should equal one. Okay, we'll try that again. So basically what was happening, um, I think we ran into this issue earlier on in the project, but when we set uh, moving to false, it just reverted them back to their default position, which is here. So now um, instead we should be pausing the animator. Okay, great, that's working. The respawning's working. And if we get eaten, Okay, so our death animation is not playing, but our lives are working. I think our death animation probably has something to do with uh, what we just did with our animator.speed. So our death animation is not working because when we go to our death function, we set our speed back to 1 to play the animation, but it immediately gets reverted back to 0. So we're only going to set it to 0 if we're not dead. So public bool is dead equals false. Um, so when we die, we're going to set is dead to be true. Let's just set that at the top of the function before anything else happens. And then in setup, we're going to set is dead to be false. And then here, we're just going to say if um, is dead or if we're not dead. So essentially, if is dead equals false then turn off our animator. So now it should still run our animation um, when we get eaten, but if we are currently alive and we are running, it should turn off our animation entirely if we are supposed to pause the game, which I think only happens when you get eaten or when you eat. Oh no, it also happens when you clear the level. So we'll have to make sure that that works. <clears throat> All right, let's try this again. So that's working. Um, let's get eaten. It's playing our death animation, great. Okay, and one more time, I'm just gonna go through and beat the level. All right, one more to truth, let's see if this works. Okay, yeah, everything seems to be working completely fine. So there's a few things um, that I guess we can talk about to sort of create the overall Pac-Man experience. You would want to make sure the speeds are correct. Um, technically, the ghosts and the ghost homes should be moving up and down. So you could create a node up top and below them that they go back and forth to. Um, and also, fruit is supposed to randomly spawn in the middle of the level. And you're supposed to be able to eat that fruit to gain points. Now, I haven't included both of those two things specifically because I think they're relatively simple to do. And you should be able to do them based off of what we've done so far. If you're not able to do them or you don't want to, that's completely okay too. This was just a learning experience. But for those of you that want to sort of see what you can do on your own now, try creating fruit that just randomly spawns from your game manager. And to get those fruit sprites, you can just type in Pac-Man fruit sprites into Google. And I'm sure they're going to come up. So you can see there are plenty of resources to do that. So remember, I set this up all for you from scratch, but if you want to make your own game, you need to learn how to be able to um, do these things by yourself. So you can try and get your own sprite and then put it on a game object and then eat it, get points. Um, and then, yeah, get your ghost moving up and down. 
and then just do things that make the game unique to you, right? So like if you don't like a certain rule that I made or a certain animation that I made, feel free to completely change it and make it your own. Thanks so much for watching this Pac-Man tutorial. I hope you had as much fun as I did.